Hi, this is Curtis from Beyond Backtesting, and today we're going to be talking about the ways that traders make decisions. I'm going to be trying to provide some value in that regard. Um, here we have my multi-charts display up. Um, I really like the uh, these these charts, these clean charts that I've got here. I, I like having different types of information. I have uh, here um, a entry you can see from the day. I took this trade. We'll talk about more about this. Um, this is a Rico chart. This is a tick chart. I have range charts, day charts, but I like to have different types of information up. I have a TPO chart up instead of just having all time based charts up. I usually keep a five minute chart up, but I don't, I'm not currently. Uh, so this is my multi chart setup. I'm probably going back to Ninja Trader because I have my Beyond Bot there, I have my order flow software there. And uh, what I was trying to do was uh, to, I do a lot of system development, easy language. And what I was trying to do was create a pipeline where I could stay in easy language and not have to do any, any conversions, but that's just not um, realistic because multi-charts does not have a replay. It has a replay, but you can't place trades in it. And when you're doing any type of discretionary trade, you need experience with uh, with this. And, and this is, uh, this will, this will, uh, this will make sense when we talk about our, our topic. I think you, you'll start to make some sense as what I'm talking about. So there the two ways that traders make decisions I like to think of it as a market cognition or an active cognition, and then there's setups and algorithmic signals. So we're going to talk about both of these. So we talk about market cognition, active cognition, or real-time hypothesis generation, right? And I really think, when I think about this, I really think about this as being a trader. And one of my skills is tape reading, which is, you know, watching the movements of the tape to, to learn how the market's going to trade. And, and often that involves, okay, trying to read the market generate information in a very objective way in the real time to gain a to gain a weighting, gain a confidence that something has changed in the market or that something is more likely than not. Uh, so maybe it's looking at okay, and this is very simplified, okay, is the market holding above a certain uh, a price level I pick out. If it's holding above that level, I may be bullish. I may have a bullish bias. If it's below that level, I may have a, a bearish bias. Um, I may be looking at how it trades near highs and lows. What type of reaction do we get? Do we does the market tend to keep going when it hits a high? Does it does it sell off? Is it struggling at those highs? Is it struggling at those lows? So I'm using all this information to kind of formulate a hypothesis. And often I do this with a I like to do this with a boundary condition where I pick a price level. That's my boundary. That's my stop loss. And I can structure almost any trade in that form. And this is what I think about when I think about a trader, because uh, a true trader can look for patterns, look for, can find an edge in many different types of markets. And they have this active mindset. And so when I think about a trader, this is what I, I think about. And this is what I like to do. I like to think, I like to read the tape and, uh, you know, get a feel for markets and get really generate these, hypo these hypotheses. The downside to this type of trading, right? The downside to this type of trading is, it's very hard to get a high, a very high level of consistency because you're not, it's not systematic enough. You're not able to refine what you're doing, right? Not that you can't be profitable doing this, not that trader couldn't be profitable or, or make a little money or, you know, I don't want to get into what types of returns are possible. But when we think about things like the trading trials or thinking about a trader who's going to be hitting consistently some figures, numbers every day, um, some traders may be able to do it this way, but a lot of traders are not going to be able to do it that way. Uh, and really, when we think about trading, is this ability to go into any market and find a small edge, is that really what trading is about? Or is it about is it about being very consistent? Is it about being able to take the best trades and only the best trades? Right. And, and regards to what we think about as, as trading, the reality is, is that the trader who is able to find the very best trades in the market and consistently take those trades, those, those, those best trades is going to be able to profit more consistently than a trader who's taking mediocre trades. OK, and that's the downside to this active cognition. So here we see on this chart, this is from the day I, and I took this trade. Uh, I have a signal, I have an algorithmic signal, just a, not, again, not nothing special, just something I put them in. And each of these pluses uh, is the strength of the signal. It kind of gives me a quality ranking. So this was a two, a two star, basically, a two or a two rank. 
so it's not the very best one, but it was it was good. You know, one is kind of this is kind of average. So we see here this actually you know was able to rip higher the whole day after this or this from this period up to the high here. I took this trade for a small scalp because I have a lot of experience with it. I haven't practiced it. That's why I need to get into replay to understand you know the types of movements that it can produce. Um, I was actually down on the day, and this allowed me to, to, to make back a little bit here. Um, I took those two contracts and, and had a decent win on this. Uh, two e ES contracts in my life. Um, I took it for just a small scalp, uh, probably up to this level somewhere right here, right? And then you see it held and, and, and made up, made uh, went higher. And it also works. Uh, seems to show some fidelity. Uh, I don't say it necessarily works, but it shows some 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 uh, quality. Some fidelity on also the tick chart, so that's a signal that you can potentially put on different charts. Um, and so, if we think about this, I don't have an example here. So, here's a three star, right? Would you be able to identify? Uh, here's a good example. Here's another two star on this on this chart, and here's a three. Um, if you're actively reading the market, what's your real ability to identify two versus a three, right? What's your real ability? The only thing I've really found is when I'm very confident in a trade, it tends to have about a seventy percent chance of working. Uh, when I'm at my at a very high level of confidence, if I haven't placed any other trades, uh, if if I haven't if I'm not in a trade, right? If I, if I haven't placed a trade, my confidence is seventy percent. Uh, then then uh, or very high, I tend to have about seventy percent chance of winning that. But in terms of two versus threes, or you know, I'm not going to be able to get look at that specific. But more importantly, uh, when we think about a trader, right? When we think about somebody who's going to be consistent. <clears throat> They need, you know, you need some kind of a structure, in my opinion. So, 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 what I think is this is a skill that you need as a trader. This uh, market cognition, active cognition, real time, this ability to generate your hypothesis, but it's probably not for live trading. Okay, and this is a kind of a something that I've had as an identity. You know, it's part of my identity is you know is doing this, and the reality is is that this is probably going to work better because you can you can back test. You can also Either, either whether it's a visual back test or a comprehensive back test, you can refine. Most importantly, is you can refine uh, these signals to to be the best, right? Now, so where does this fit in? Where does this ability to, to generate ideas and, and and trade ideas fit in? This fits in. This is still going to be important, but this is going to be in the simulator. You know, that's that's this this goes to the simulator or paper count. Uh, and, and what I would suggest is to have a, 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 no, a notebook up, a notepad, maybe a Notion notepad or just a Windows notepad or any type of a, a notepad up and be taking notes as you do this. Because if you do this, uh, in my case, it's a very high bandwidth type of uh, processing. There's a lot of information and it's very hard to decode afterward all the decision making that went into that trade. It's very hard and it takes a lot of work. And if you try to do it in the live, uh, often it hurts the performance because it takes you out of flow. But you know, we can you know break that down, and, and then you can take that, and you can use that to either drive system development, or you can use that to drive setups and algorithmic trades, okay, and program that in. And this has been kind of hard for me to really, and, and it's kind of a circle loop back because I kind of did it, laid out everything I needed with the Beyond Bot, and I just you know did not fully take advantage of that. But it really comes back now, and so. So where I see my trading going is not so much not doing very much uh, real time trading with with without uh, sets or algorithm, algorithmic signals like you see here, and then uh, I may wait. I may use my taper, you know, my kind of my bias to just pick which signals I use at a higher level, and also to, to, to determine how I manage those trades, um, potentially which trades I take, even how I you know how aggressive I am. You know, I may be able to use. I may say, okay, my tape read is a is a, controls the specific specific in entry. The signal gives me, okay, look for an entry, but my read of the market may 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 be like a point structure in there. Okay, this is not really looking. I'm not too confident on this. Again, there's things we can you can work with that, but you're giving a structure, right? And you see the value of that structure right here is that. Um, it, it identified this great trade here, uh, and a lot of the, you know, and it, it also, you know, I had losses when I was in 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 the in all the uncertainty. If I had just took that one trade, it would have been a winning day. So uh, that's how I'm thinking about. It. And the, the 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 hard part for me is a, is an identity, and uh, you know, this is one reason I said sometimes just give yourself a title like. 
uh, if you are trying to do more systematic trading, then, then think of yourself as maybe a uh, more of a uh, of a uh, uh, market. Uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, um, you know. Give yourself a title like a chief trading uh, strategist, right? And, and, and try to change your identity to be more, okay, I'm a trading strategist. I'm a systematic trading strategist. The, the market cognition will feed in, right? This, this loop can feed into this, and it's still there. It's still there. It's just, it's just feeding in and being refined. Um, and, and, and so the loop is still there. The creative process loop is still there. Um, it just has to be refined. And, and reality is, if you went to a, most professional trading firms, they're not going to allow you to trade with discretion. They're going to say, look, you got some ideas. Let's back test them. Let's see what you have. You know, they're not going to let you just go in there and trade without some kind of results. Most trading firms would not allow, don't, don't have anybody trading. You know, it's all automated. Um, so, you know, I, this is how I'm thinking. This is how I'm structuring my trading and getting away from the discretionary stuff. I may bring it back in at some point, you know, if, if I'm mentally strong for scalps or something. But I think that, uh, I think that uh, having a few trades that I watch for, you know, I practice for, that's been programmed in. One of the things about this to make this really work, and uh, one of my reluctance to doing this is to make this really work, you need, in my opinion, you need about three or four signals. You need some signals for different market cognitions because this one signal is viewing the market through one lens, right? And a discretionary trader are very good. That's very good at identifying market cognition or has a very active cognition. What they're really good at, in, in, in my opinion, and often is the case, is what they're really good at is identifying market regimes and different types of uh, conditions where different trading types of techniques might work or not. Right. So we got to think about the different types of market uh, conditions, and you'll need a few. You'll need a trade or two for those different uh, for those conditions. So you'll need. You know, you'll need some short trades, some long trades. You'll need some trades for trending markets. And then you have some freedom to apply this with discretion. Whereas if you only have one signal, uh, you're kind of, uh, you know, you're only able to view the market through one one lens, so to speak. So that's going to be what I'm going to be doing is trying to get some of these signals coded up, three or four signals, practice them and see what type of performance I can get. And that will determine how I proceed with the trials and, and, but I think that, you know, when you think about it, is a trader who, who you know, as you know, it, trading is not about, as much as I would, we would like to think, trading is not about, you know, being able to go to any market, figure it out, make, and, 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 and generate a little bit of profit or generate, uh, generate you know, some decent trades. It, it's really about finding those best trades, you know, finding the trades where you could consistently win 70% of the time all. Or that have great risk reward and and, and hitting your numbers right. If, if you're going to if we're going to be a trader hits five hundred dollars a day, you got to hit that five hundred dollars a day, and you know this one trade here could do that right and without giving it back, without getting involved in stupid trades. So um, that's how I'm thinking about it. Um, and again, it's this identity thing that's kind of been my problem. Is that I'm a tape reader, so well, I probably will do to kind of help with that. As I allow my tape read to give me the, to be a uh, you know one more point in my ranking, so it's just an it's just an entry thing. Okay, okay, it's tape strong. It's just one more point. Okay, I'm a little more confident on this trade or not, and that that will be kind of a, how I will do that. So I can still do it in the real time. It's okay. I'm a little, I'm a, I'm pretty sure on this. Maybe I I, I I adjust it just a little bit based on that factor. Um, but yeah, I think this is the way to go. Simply because, you know, with the with the active cognition, the good thing, but one good thing about the active cognition is that you have it is a more general way of profit for markets. But that's great, and if your signals are not working, then and the market changes, and then then get on the simulator, get on the on the on the on your paper account, take your notes, do your you know generate that active cognition, and then go and program it in, and, and at least you have. At a minimum, you have a programmed uh, an objective signal. Of course, it could be a back-tested signal even better. And you can maybe rank that, find some factors. Okay, this signal, I don't, when the market's really weak, this is signal doesn't work too good. Or if the market's down 2%, or um, then you find some factors and, and, and know, okay, uh, when the signal is the best, 
when it's best and when it's not. And you can try to start taking those best quality trades um, and get more consistent. So that's how I'm treating uh, my trading. Again, this market cognition is very critical. Uh, if you don't have that, then, you know, you're not really, there's not much to work with, but doesn't mean you have to do it in the live. Doesn't mean you have to even do it with small size. You can do it on the simulator. Use that to to use that logic, use that uh, creativity to feed into either your setups, algorithm signals, or backtested systems. And then you can practice and rehearse trading that. So that's how I'm configuring my trading. I just have to, uh, you know, kind of go over it again. Um, not to say I won't ever do some some real time, you know, real time uh, trading type of, uh, of analysis, but I want to be consistent and I want to be taking the best quality trades. And you know, I need to make uh, that's that's I think it's going to allow me to do that better. Is to focus on you know practicing more signals that have an edge, right? In the context, good thing about having these signals too is is, it, is that yeah, you can't do anything. It's okay when well, you there's nothing to do until you get a signal. But that's also nice because it means I don't have to be reading the tape, reading the every little tick, uh, you know, every little uh, wiggle in the, in the market. I can wait until I get the signal, focus, zoom in, focus in on that. Now I can read the market uh, very intently and when, when there is an opportunity. So I think that makes sense. Um, yeah, so uh, that's how I'm proceeding with it. Uh, in, in my opinion, either this makes the most sense or just going fully automated. Uh, fully automated is... Uh, the difference in going fully automated and doing something like this is with fully automation, you're going to have a stronger evidence that what you're doing works. Uh, the strongest evidence, really. That's going to be your strongest evidence. However, you may not be able to adapt to changing market conditions as well. Uh, you may not be able to profit to the same extent because your signals have to work through all history, so to speak. Um, whereas with this type of a thing, you're... You know, you're not trying to figure out on the fly, but you, it, so it's kind of between. So it's, your. I would say your your probability of, of making money is less than with automated trading, but your potential to make a greater profit may be a little more. So that's how I'm thinking about it. Let me know how you think about it. Is my thinking, if you're, you know, uh, if you're a large trader, is, is my thinking correct? Um, do you have a different way of thinking about things? This is how I'm thinking about it, though. Um, you know, uh, you know, I was often for a long time a, a uh, you know, against us because I was like, if I can understand the market structure, I can generate any type of any entry signal I need. But, uh, you know, there's different levels of consistency. There's different levels of performance. And to be honest, a trader who's producing, you know, with very small risk is maybe able to produce 30 percent or 50 percent a year is not the type of consistency that you're going to need to trade at a prop firm. And it's also, frankly, unless you have a large account, not the type of consistency you would need to trade for, you know, worthwhile income. Uh, so that's something about it. Uh, let me know what you think. Hope this was. Hope, hope you found this valuable. Um, that's all for now.